In the tropical forest regions of our planet, particularly those in Asia, you can find a very interesting parasitic fungus. One that has an incredible yet brutal effect on ants and other insects. The fungus takes control of the insect and forces it to carry out its reproductive cycle, which, if successful, can destroy the whole colony. Welcome to Wiser. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoy the video. The killer fungus I'm talking about is called Cordyceps. The name comes from Greek, which translates to mean clubhead, likely due to the unique appearance of the fungus as it grows out of its host. There are over 400 known species of it, and each has evolved to take a different kind of insect as its victim. Let's start by taking a look at a specific species of Cordyceps, called Ophiocordyceps unilateralis. This species has evolved to target the Campatini tribe of ants, including carpenter ants, which are indigenous to tropical areas all around the world. When an ant comes into contact with a Cordyceps spore, it attaches to the body of the ant and it eventually punctures through the exoskeleton with a combination of mechanical pressure and enzymes. The parasite is then free to spread throughout the ant's body, internal organs and muscles. Shortly after, the ant will begin to exhibit behavioural changes, experiencing convulsions and will appear almost drunk or dizzy as it moves in an unnatural fashion. The fungus has now taken control of the ant and will begin forcibly directing it to its location of choice. It was previously thought that Cordyceps took control and commanded the ant's movement through infection of its brain, but we now know that this is not the case. Instead, it leaves the brain intact and directly manipulates the muscles of the ant, almost like a puppeteer pulling the strings. The parasite will force the ant to stop working and climb a small tree or plant against its will. The fungus is looking for a very specific location, the underside of a leaf on the northern side of the plant, at a height of around 25 centimeters from the forest floor. Once it has found this oddly specific location, it will manipulate the ant to bite down hard onto the main vein of the leaf, securing it to the plant. The fungus then kills the ant, as it begins to grow hyphae from within, which form a kind of branching network of fungus. It spreads throughout the ant's body, exoskeleton, and ultimately, its brain. It also begins to secrete antimicrobials to ward off other competition in the form of other fungi and bacteria. Then, when the cordyceps fungus is ready, the sporocarp, or fruiting body of the parasite, bursts out of the ant's head and grows club or needle-shaped mushrooms. These mushrooms then rupture, releasing spores into the air, the forest floor below, and more ants, and the process repeats. Incredibly, when the infected ant first begins to show signs, the healthy ants can sense that it is a threat to the colony. They will actually pick up the infected ant and very quickly take it as far away as they can and dump it to protect the colony, almost as if it were a ticking time bomb which could wipe them all out, which isn't too far from the truth. Ophiocordyceps unilateralis has been known to wipe out entire ant colonies, yet the parasite is actually a victim to yet another parasite. A fungal hyperparasite which is yet to be identified and generally called the anti-zombie fungus fungus, attacks the cordyceps fungus as it sprouts from the ant, damaging it and causing around 94% of infections to be unable to release their spores. Ants are also known to clean and groom each other, which further decreases the success rates of Ophiocordyceps unilateralis. As I said previously, this is just the reproductive process of one species of Cordyceps. There are approximately 399 more species that each target a different insect. A few more of particular interest are Ophiocordyceps sinensis also known as the caterpillar fungus, which targets only the larva of moths. It is also described in traditional Chinese medical books as a medicine for all kinds of diseases and ailments. Ophiocordyceps robertsi, known as the vegetable caterpillar, is actually burnt by the Maori people of New Zealand, and the ash is mixed with fat and used as tattoo ink. 
Ophiocordyceps nutans takes stink bugs as its host. In Korea, stink bugs cause considerable damage to agriculture and forestry, and this species is essentially a biological control agent against them. And finally, for a real tongue twister, is Ophiocordyceps sphecocephala, which targets wasps and is being researched for possible anti-asthmatic and anti-cancer properties. With cordyceps affecting hundreds of different species of insect, the fungus actually serves a purpose in population control and ensuring the balance of insect numbers in different ecosystems. Just like the two possibly medicinal cordyceps species that I previously mentioned, many other cordyceps species have been researched and it appears that they could have all manner of medicinal benefits for humans, including boosting exercise performance, anti-aging properties, anti-tumor effects, treating diabetes, fighting inflammation, and benefits to heart health. There are actually many cordyceps supplements available for purchase online, and traditional Chinese medicine suggests that they are non-toxic to humans. However, only animal and lab studies have suggested the benefits, and the safety of cordyceps in humans has not yet been fully examined. In 2015, a researcher named Yu Matsura discovered cicadas that should have died from malnutrition, but were kept alive by a new species of cordyceps. Cicadas live off of tree sap and the bacteria that lives inside them. An essential species of bacteria that they need to survive was no longer available to them, and the cicadas didn't have it inside them. They should have been dead, but they weren't. Matsura discovered a foreign fungus present inside the cicada, and it was a species of cordyceps. It was similar to the species that affects ants, but it was essentially feeding the cicada and keeping it alive in place of the missing bacteria. The cicada had essentially domesticated the parasite and was living in a kind of symbiotic relationship. Paul Stamets is an American mycologist who has done some incredible research on mushrooms and fungi. He has also researched cordyceps extensively and is a firm believer and educator on the medicinal benefits of the fungus. Also, his hat is made out of mushroom. I'm not joking. He has compared the networks of mycelium fungus that mushrooms form to that of the neural network of a brain and to the artificial network of the internet. He believes that these fungal networks are actually sentient. If this is true, this would help to explain the mysterious abilities of cordyceps. I recommend checking out Paul Stamet's work and interviews, it's a very interesting rabbit hole. Cordyceps has also been featured in movies, books and video games. It was a core part of the story in the award-winning video game, The Last of Us. The game portrays a fictional cordyceps fungus, which has mutated to be able to infect human hosts, leading to a kind of fungal zombie apocalypse. Similarly, a book named The Girl With All The Gifts and its follow-up movie adaptation depict a dystopian future where society is broken down after most of humanity has been wiped out by a mutated version of the cordyceps fungus. There's also the 1963 Japanese horror movie, Matango, also released under the titles Fungus of Terror and Attack of the Mushroom People. Survivors of a shipwreck become marooned on an island where an evil mushroom has turned all the people into mushroom zombies. Sounds like cordyceps to me. It is by far one of the most intriguing mushrooms on the planet, and it almost seems to have a mind of its own with its ability to manipulate insects. If you'd like to delve deeper into the interesting world of cordyceps, mushrooms, and fungi, I'll put links to all the information I've referenced in this video in the description, along with links to the work of the incredible researchers I've mentioned. Let me know what you think about cordyceps in the comments. I'd love to hear your thoughts on this parasitic medicinal killer zombie fungus. Thanks for watching this episode of Wiser. If you enjoyed it, please hit those like and subscribe buttons. And don't forget to turn on the notification bell to see my future videos. If you wish to support me, I'm on Patreon and the link is in the description. Thanks again, I'll see you next time.